Welcome to Spirit of Cocktails, I'm your host Pierre. Today we're making the Nutty Professor, the Alaskan Polar Bear Heater. For a while I kept thinking this thing was called the Polar Bear he Eater, but it's a heater. Someone that I know from work named Doug, he told me about this. And that gave me an idea. I've been wanting to try and make this for a while, ever since he first told me. I was just like, I don't know, there's, there's too much stuff in there. And I, he kept giving me a recipe, I forgot the recipe, he gave it to me, I forgot it, he gave it to me, I forgot it. So this time I figured, I'll look it up. The Alaskan Polar Bear Heater. It's from the Night Professor from 1963. It's one scene there. It's a very classic scene. He basically just calls out the recipe in full. He does say vinegar. But if you actually watch closely, you don't put vinegar in there. So that I'm kind of going to leave out. You can add it if you want. If you want to keep it to the way he said it. Or if you just want to have it the way the bartender made it, then do it that way. But if you actually watch closely, he says... Two shots of vodka. Yeah, he puts two shots. He just, just pours it directly, which you guarantee that's not exactly in two ounces. That's probably like three or four ounces the way he poured it. But he also said a little bit of rum. Now, the thing with the little bit of rum, you figure a shot is an ounce. A little bit, you're looking about half an ounce. So you figure about half ounce of rum. But he literally poured it in twice. So he, in a sense, put two shots of rum in there on top of the two shots of vodka. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to add that much rum. It's going to be a little too much potency already because all the stuff that goes in this. So we're just going to do the two. As he said, which is a little bit. No vinegar. I'm not going to add vinegar. If you want to add vinegar, you could try regular vinegar. You could try wine vinegar, apple vinegar, whatever type of vinegar you want just to get that flavor. There's many versions of this recipe out there that do stay true to it, but tweak it just a little bit. Then you have the vermouth. Because he just says vermouth. So that kind of leads you up to which way you want to go. Sweet vermouth, dry vermouth. So in this way, I'm going with dry vermouth. You can try with sweet vermouth if you want to add a little bit more of a sweetness to it. But with this much, that little bit of sweetness is not going to help. There's so much alcohol in this. It's just, the only thing to sweeten up is maybe the cherry you put in and your citrus peels. That's about it. But then you also have the gin, a little bit of brandy, which would be about half an ounce. And the thing that makes no sense, he says, and some more scotch. He didn't use scotch in the beginning of the recipe. He never once called out. So how could you use some more scotch if there was never scotch to begin with? But to keep true to that, to what it was done in the show, we're just adding a little bit of scotch at the end, about an ounce of that. So it's definitely going to be an interesting shot. Or interesting drink, rather. That I'm definitely looking forward to try. I saw it. I was like, nah, I gotta make this. I'm curious, because you have the dry herbal notes of the gin. You got the definitely the dry notes of the uh, vermouth. Caribbean rum spice flavors. You got your vodka. You got the bitters in there. You got your aged brandy. You got the oaky smoke notes of the scotch. A little bit of citrus flavor and just a tiny bit of cherry. It's going to be interesting. So, to show you how this is made, as I said, you can make it any way you want, as long as it stays true to the idea of the recipe. You can add vinegar if you want. Basically, says a smidgen. Basically, like a bar spoon. If you get one of these, that's about a bar spoon worth. That worked perfectly fine. Let's have everyone do it. I'll show you how this one's made. If you ever actually really watch that show, that bartender is the worst bartender in the world. You don't pour directly in like that. You would do if you have the the ones they use in the past, the actual metal two-sided shot glasses. You would take it. Yeah, pour, dump, pour, dump. Make sure it's even amounts. Unless you actually had the pour spouts, then you just do a free pour. But don't just go, it ain't going to work. But, we're going to do it the right way. All right? So you take two ounces, two shots, basically, of vodka. Then you want to take 
a little bit of rum, not his way, and put two ounces of rum. So we're going to go with a little as in a half ounce. Now since this actually was a recipe that was brought to my attention from Doug from work, I am going to do his style recipe Friday because his style recipe turns into shots. Because if you actually watch that scene in the movie, he takes a whole thing and just chugs it like it's nothing. I ain't going to chug this. This is a lot of stuff. That's the one thing I definitely don't want to do. But we're going to do the shot for him. You can make it as many ways you want. Alaska Polar Beer Heater Shots. That'll be on Friday. And after it releases, I'll put a link on this video. So you take an ounce. It says shot of vermouth. A shot of gin. Man, that vermouth is definitely coming out already. Just smell it. I'm going to take a little bit of brandy. In this case, half ounce. And even though it was not in there, but some more scotch, which would be an ounce. Then you want to add some brandy or some bitters rather. You do a dash, two dashes, however you want to do it. That's one thing about this recipe. He just says some bitters, rum, vodka, vinegar, vermouth, gin, brandy, scotch. So basically, he doesn't say what type of scotch, he doesn't say what type of brandy, he doesn't say what type of vodka, what type of rum, what type of vermouth. If you have vinegar, you don't say what type of vinegar. So this leaves this recipe open to much suggestion, however you want to do it. It's not necessarily going to be a wrong way. As long as you stay true to the basis, it's still the recipe. And then he says some lemon peel. Some orange peel. And a cherry. Which, idly enough, if you watch the video, all the stuff he put in it, it's the one thing he kind of had to discuss a look after. It's just a cherry. Give it a shake. Now here's another part that kind of leaves itself open to interpretation, however you want to do it. Because he just says put it all in the glass. Which means technically you take this whole thing and just dump it in the glass. That's how he did it in the movie. You could also strain to a glass if you don't really want to have the oranges, the cherry, and all that stuff in there. You just want to have the drink over ice and do it that way. So I'm going to do it how he did it in the movie. Just dump it. It's actually a really good presentation by just dumping it. You look at that, you get the single cherry, and a little bit of the cherry juice kind of came into the cocktail. You got the aeration from the shake. You got the leaching of the, the peel, kind of infused itself inside the, the different mixes. You have that bitter element, a little bit of sour element. Maybe that's where the vinegar kind of would help it, because it'll take the the tart citrus flavor and kind of balance it out, give it a little bit of a bite. Oh no. But this is actually Night Professor Alaskan Polar Bear Heater. Fairly close to the way he did it on the show. Minus the fact that even though he said a little bit, he had two shots of rum. Let's try it out, see how it tastes, because I imagine very curious about this one. I 
actually not bad. It's not so good to the point that I can just take this whole thing and just down it like it does in the movie. No, it is potent. Because really, the only thing common this down, because everything here is at least a minimum 40 proof. This, well, 40%. This is actually 43%. So you got 40, 40, 43, 40, 40. This is the only thing that's lower, I believe, around 20%. Maybe 17 at most. 15%. And bitter is just adds flavor. So it's all high-proof alcohol. The only thing common down is the peel and the vermouth. That's not much. So it's definitely potent. It is flavorful. It is a very good blend in there. It's a very interesting combination of flavors. You can get that citrus out of that. It's one thing that's definitely standing out. But it's really good, actually. This is something, this way, I can definitely drink. I'll enjoy. It's perfect that way. You can strain it if you don't want to have the orange peel in there. But it works just fine with the orange peel. However you want to make it. But it's actually good. It has a lot of popularity on the sites. And it's something that... A lot of companies, if you ever look at like Drake Mixer, Thousand One Cocktails, all the different sites, everybody has their own interpretation of this. This, I kind of may look at a couple of them sites just to get a basis of their concepts, see how they're made. But this, I'm getting mostly just by watching the actual show. So by watching that, that little clip in the movie, that's how you got the idea of the recipe. It doesn't take much. You look at the bartender, his, how he's pouring it. Kind of gives you an idea. Now, if you add the vinegar to this, it's definitely going to be a little more of an acidic flavor to it. You already got the citrus acid. You don't really want to add that much more of acidic flavor. But it's actually really good. If you use red wine vinegar, that'll work just fine. But it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's perfect just the way it is. And if you really did add two ounces of rum, I don't think I'm really going to change the flavor much. Let's just give it a little bit more. Of that rum flavor, that caramelized molasses flavor you get from a rum. But it's actually good. I like it. I definitely suggest you guys try this out. And be sure to check this out on Friday because, as I said, we're going to do Doug's original recipe, which is a shooter style. It's done the same way where you got everything here plus a couple extra ingredients that weren't mentioned in the movie. But it's his idea of how it was made and it's the way he likes it. He says there he makes a drink, he takes whatever's left because he pours himself a couple of shots and just pours rice in the bottle and puts it in the fridge and just drink whenever he wants. But anyway you want it, it's a good recipe. And his recipe is going to be very similar, but in shot format, which I'm really interested to try that too. Hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to cocktails, subscribe to our channel, submit your recipes. If you see me, if you're any of the followers I know from my job or anywhere I go and you see me and you have an idea for a recipe, let me know, just like Doug did. I'll be sure to make it on the show. As always, drink responsibly.